Welcome to the Naked Mama podcast, where to be truly naked is to be eternally committed to stripping away the layers, illuminating the truth within, and emerging as the woman, the mother that you are destined to become. To be truly naked is to be truly you. I am your host, Angel Rockwell, intuitive motherhood coach, transformational mentor, and bold believer in turning the impossible into reality. I am a mama, a wife, a revolutionary entrepreneur, and a visionary for creating a legacy of abundance and fulfillment inside of motherhood. My mission here with the Naked Mama podcast is to debunk the myths of motherhood that disconnect you from your power as a mother and as a woman, and to reconnect you back to the sanctity and magic of the mother-child bond that ultimately is the key to uncovering the ease, freedom, and confidence that you desire, and truth be told, are meant to experience. I'm going to be sharing pieces of my transformational journey along with purely sourced intuitive guidance so that you can begin to see what's possible for you, know that you are not alone, and begin to take action, building momentum towards living the life that you know deep down you are meant to live. The Naked Mama podcast is here to break down the myths of motherhood that are holding you back. Each episode is designed to be a powerful conversation to raise the consciousness of women through motherhood. Each episode holds the power for you to shift into alignment, gain deeper clarity, and expand your awareness. My commitment to you is to show up authentically and be naked with you. The journey here inside the Naked Mama podcast is the journey of evolution and expansion into deeper levels of fulfillment, freedom, and ease. Here inside these episodes, we connect and ground, nourish ourselves, grow and rise together. I am so excited to welcome you into the world of the Naked Mama. Now, if you're wanting extra love and more support in between episodes, please follow me on Instagram at the Real Angel Rockwell. Now, let's dive right into today's episode. Hello, gorgeous souls, and happy new year. Welcome to this beautiful, fresh start. Now, of course, if you're catching this episode and it's not the beginning of 2022, take a deep breath and be inside this energy. It really doesn't matter what point, what day it is on the calendar that we are in a year, this vibe, this freedom, this spaciousness, this possibility is always available to us. Now, in today's episode, we're going to dive into things a little bit differently. We're going to have a lot of fun this year, and I know that you can feel it, that the space that's here is a little different than it was last year. Things have shifted. I think the vocabulary I'd like to use there. So to start things off, I'm going to call myself out a little bit and call myself forward. I invite you to do the same in this space that we're in today, looking at the specific myth that there isn't enough support for moms. I'm going to be in the thick of this with you, calling myself out for things that I've said, for ways I've limited myself, and even inside this podcast, I have heard myself say some things that I'm going to call myself faux for with the benefit and in the safety here with you to really progress beyond the narratives and the stories that we've been telling that have been holding us back. So let's take a deep breath. Exhale all of your breath out of your belly, mama, and sip in through the nose, expanding, settling, relaxing, part the lips, allow yourself to effortlessly find yourself here in this moment. Now I know that when I say the words, there isn't enough support for moms, there is a really big vein of vibe that would support this. So trust me here, I am entering into this conversation with 
love and compassion and understanding and deep knowing that I got you and I love you. And that's not just from me, that's through me from this beautiful, vast universe in which we all exist. So I'll start here. In a previous episode, in episode four, I referred to, I used the phrase external support. And I said that my husband and I, we don't ask for external support. Now, when I was recording this, I'll be totally honest, it didn't feel good to say I was dancing around something. So first I want to clarify what I meant. What I was afraid to say was we have chosen not to ask for support from our extended family. We have set some very clear and uh, very clear boundaries in what we are willing to receive and not receive, which the underlying theme here of this episode is receiving. If there isn't enough of something, we desire something more, and there's always an avenue in which we can receive it. So for me, I'm just calling myself forward to say I had a bit of a difficulty <laughs> expressing myself in that moment, and I know it can be that way. We make these choices and we have these truths inside of us and we know that it's safe there. And we're kind of afraid that if we if we say it to the world that someone is going to taint it or it's going to get damaged or wrecked or destroyed. So again, I invite you here in this space of confession to call yourself forward. Give yourself the safety and the trust and the surrender that these little blips and things that we feel of, mm, that didn't quite feel right. We don't need to dig into ourselves as to why, but we can speak it like it is and call ourselves forward. Recognizing that I had done this, danced around what I really meant, just saying, because when I heard the words, the words I said was that we don't ask for external support. Now that's not accurate at all. <laughs> I ask for support from many sources, physical sources, spiritual sources, energetic sources. I love asking for support. So I also had to recognize in myself that the words I was using were very powerful and really inaccurately aligned with my truth. So what, what's here for you to take away from our conversation today is, is deeper connection, is the vibe of not aloneness, is the vibe of up upliftment and empowerment for not just what is possible, but for what is here right now. This myth that there isn't enough support for moms is big. And interestingly enough, when I started, when I got really clear and started my journey as an intuitive motherhood coach, that's one thing that I said often, there isn't enough support for these moms. It's not here. These women need more. And through my own process of getting really honest with myself and hearing myself speak, I realized that that's not a narrative that supports. So I'm calling this forward and I'm calling the greater myth forward and I'm creating here with you inside this conversation right now, a new narrative that truly does support every single mother out there in the way that she desires and in ways that are beyond beneficial. So I feel like we should take another deep breath. Exhale all the air out. Inhale, take a deep breath in. Part the lips, exhale. I'm going to walk you through a few stories today. And again, the, the intention and the purpose behind me sharing all of this with you is because I know this isn't just my truth. And to speak it, to call it forward, you will hear pieces of yourself and allow those seeds to settle just beautifully as they're going to. Once you hear something, once you know it, once you feel it, it cannot be forgotten. Which brings me to my first little story here. In 2016, I took part in a personal growth seminar. And the details of how this all came about, I'm sure I wouldn't even be able to find in my old notebook. But the feeling has stuck 
with me, that moment of clarity when everything just went and expanded outwards. And I realized that I was not letting love in. Blew my mind. I, you know, I I called my mom and I called my dad and I called my brother. I even called my ex-husband. It just, it blew my mind. I saw everything so clearly that what I had been asking for to feel loved, to be loved, to have people, the people in my life that I desired to receive certain things from, that it had nothing to do with them and it was all me. My walls were up and they were huge. What we ask for the most is what we say we want the most and is also what really lives in our blind spots. Now, those blind spots are such gems and they hold such power and they can seem so mysterious. Those things that we can feel frustrated about in, well, I'm just, I'm missing something. It's on the tip of my tongue. I can feel it here, but I don't know what it is. And then the spirals of doubt and frustration and anxiety and worry all can come into play. But knowing that we have blind spots, this is just part of the beautiful expansion and transformational journey of our lives to cultivate that relationship and to say that there's just beauty inside, to not get hung up on the details of how we're going to get there. Because I'm sure even now you can look back at a moment like I described for me in 2016, where this was a three-day seminar and I don't remember what happened for the first day and a half, but I remember this moment. I can see myself standing like out of body, how I moved, how I felt, where I stood when I made the phone calls. Again, the words I don't know, but the feeling is there. You can recall upon at least one moment in your life right now, I know you can, where you know that feeling. Somehow, and it's because of all of these myths that we're conditioned to believe as truths and they're not, we get hung up on the details, thinking that it's the details that are going to get us to the big moments. But it's never that way. It's the freedom to move through the details, to recognize them, to notice them, but not control them. Now, this for me definitely is a theme in my life as a we all continue to go through deeper levels of our spiritual expansion. We're going to run into, we're going to come into contact with similar themes again and again. Not because we didn't get it right the first time, but because we're getting better and we can uncover more. So after, after a rough road with my husband, we had made some, uh, I had, I'm going to own this, I made some really powerful choices. I set some really healthy boundaries for myself on the kind of life I wanted for me and for my daughter in terms of our our energetics and our emotional well-being. And this, my husband and I bumped up against each other a fair bit and he came to it very quickly. This isn't about him, but I will just shout him out for a second and say I am so proud of him for... <laughs> For surrendering to my power. <laughs> Not long after, I I was being given. I found myself living in the world of saying, okay, now I'm receiving. He's, he's saying the things I've always wanted him to say. He's doing the things that I've always wanted him to do. Our life looks from the outside like everything that I had pictured it ever would. And I was resisting it like crazy. On default, it wasn't, I didn't consciously wake up and say, I'm going to push you away, but wow, was it ever obvious. And again, as humans, because of all of these myths and this conditioning, we we don't believe that it's here. Like, it's too good to be true. We hear this phrase all the time. And, you know, myths that I've covered in previous episodes about the whole sacrifice. If I sacrifice this now, we'll have this later. That if we're having the good thing now, on the flip side, well, I'm going to have to give something up later, which is why the sacrifice is just, if you haven't listened to that episode yet, I highly recommend you go back and check it out. So my husband even said to me at what point, like, I, I don't understand. This is everything you said you wanted and like, you're still not happy. And we had to work together and I also had to get really clear. I wanted to get really clear 
on how I could navigate and just allow everything to be okay, to stop judging myself and release, oh my God, this is everything you asked for. You should be enjoying this. Well, no, like you're here. I was there and that's how I felt. So honoring that I had some things I need to address and what really was needing to be addressed was my feelings around safety. And for women, for mothers, I know this one is big. Is it safe to allow ourselves to receive that which we have asked for? Is it safe? Like, what's the catch? Again, herein lies the myth of the sacrifice for gain, and I'm sure you're beginning to see the entanglement of all of these myths here inside motherhood. Now, is it safe? Of course, we can look at our physical environment, you know, should I go running across that highway with high-speed traffic? No, that's not safe. That's not what we're talking about here. That emotional safety where when we feel threatened, the way our energetic and spiritual bodies and even our even our mental faculties perceive threat is the same, no matter whether it's the high-speed traffic down the highway or just change, like a drastic shift in our environment. It's something new. This is something different. This is change. This is threatening to the way things were, or this is threatening to the way things are, or this is threatening to the way I thought things should be. When there's a threat, our safety comes into play. So I invite you now to just consider what does it mean to feel safe? Because this is the question that was posed to me at this time. Realizing that letting love in and setting boundaries up against that is kind of a theme, and I'm getting more and more playful with it and delighting in it as it continues to reappear in my life and my process. What does safety mean to you? We know what it feels like when we're not safe, but what does it feel like to be safe? What is the quality of your being? What does the energy of safety feel like? Because then once we understand that foundation, we can begin to understand really truthfully what the circumstances can be to set ourselves up to feel that way. So in terms of this myth, that there's not enough support for moms, there has been so much historically that has led up to this moment right here where I'm speaking these words and this moment right here where you are receiving them that have created a lot of walls for women, for mothers to feel like we need to protect. And in protection, there are safeguards and in safeguards, there are walls and in walls, we keep certain things out. So knowing how to discern between what you want to receive and what someone is trying to force on you to be received is very different. There is, yes, gratitude and appreciation for everything that is, regardless of whether we're perceiving it as good or bad. Things just are, and we have the ability to perceive them the way we want to, which is the power to shift. A lot of conditioning that has come into play up until now is almost the condescension of, well, I'm giving you this, you should be appreciative. And that's coming from somebody else. So you can hear it even in the tone of my voice, and I'm not going to say it again that way. You know what it feels like. You've been on the receiving end of somebody telling you that you should be grateful for what they're giving you because, I don't know, they're so amazing. <laughs> They know better than you do, that the gift they're giving you is better than anything you could possibly fathom for yourself. It's all bullshit. And around motherhood, as I'm so excited to just be sharing this work, there's so much confusion and there doesn't have to be that way. So for me, I've completely changed my dialogue from this moment on. There is unlimited support for mothers. And coming from me as a mother who has kept support and love and there's a word there that I'm, maybe we'll spit out later. 
I have kept support and love at bay by putting up walls that I thought were protecting me. And they did. They served their purpose. And then once I was able to illuminate those blind spots and feel safety within me, not reliant on safety being the circumstantial things around me that allow me to feel safe, my safety, my root, my foundation, the basis of all of the work that I create in my signature sequence of transformation we all know, you know, you know what you want and you know how to receive it. You know how to open yourself up to receive it. And when we start paying attention too much to what's going on outside, what's going on outside of ourselves, we can just get confused on what we really want. Maybe we've been telling the story that, well, I really want this. I really want this. I really want this. And maybe it's not something you want anymore. That's a possibility. Chances are most likely, and it's been my experience, and I see this in my clients, and I see this out in the world, that we say we want something, and we want it so badly, and then someone gives us a taste of it, and then we've built up so much resistance to it already that it's kind of like, pings off of us, like uh, just pings away. So understanding how to frame up boundaries, what boundaries really mean for you. Nobody else gets to decide this. Nobody else gets to choose this for us. Nobody can give us, this is, this is the real part here. Nobody can give us anything that we are not open to receive. And if you're seeing someone in your life or you speak about someone in your head that they are not giving you what you want, it has nothing to do with them and everything to do with you. Everyone in our lives is a mirrored reflection of that which we are unable, unwilling to see within ourselves. And I say this from a place of knowing I have done this. And I'm sure that I'm going to do it again. I would say this is a theme that I've seen recurring. The more we see it, the more we play with it, the more we just allow it to be a beautiful part of our transformational process and our spiritual expansion, the more we can surrender, relax, and really just extract the beautiful goodness out of this. So I want to tie in here as well what all of this means for, for our children as well. To say there isn't enough support. There isn't enough support for moms. There aren't enough resources. We can get stuck on the circumstantial thing. But when I talk about support, I'm meaning the foundational feelings of unconditional love and support and belonging and acceptance. This is just not true. And forgive me for all of you women out there who have heard me say it. I was wrong. There is unlimited support for moms. This podcast, all of the work that I do, and so many other beautiful, amazing, inspired leaders out there who are rising up in their own work, in their own lives to show us that there is always more than enough. There's always endless streams to receive that which we want. So our power here really comes into us being willing to be clear and choose that which we want. And then when it is given, allow ourselves the grace to not just immediately snap into focus and throw a parade and dance around with flowers in our hair in a field with the wind blowing in our hair, feeling, ah, oh, I'm so grateful that this is here. Everything I've asked for is here. We are human. And we learn through all of this process. So often it comes up, mothers will say, 
well, I this is this is what I asked for and now it's here, but it doesn't feel good or I don't like it or I'm struggling to receive it, so it must have been wrong. I shouldn't have asked for it in the first place and then it just gets shoved right back down. <sighs> I have been there. You are not alone in this. In those moments, when you look at your child and you're having one of those days, weeks, moments, whatever it is, and you're struggling and you're judging yourself, say, this is what I wanted. Why am I not happy? Why am I not more fulfilled? Why am I not more relaxed and joyful and satisfied and grateful? Hear this voice, hear my words and my voice in your ear. There is unlimited support here for you. You are loved, you are seen, you are held in safety exactly where you are. Now take a breath out, exhale all of your air out of the belly. Sip in through the nose. You are safe. You are seen. You are loved. Part the lips. Exhale. Effortlessly let it fall. The points here that really crumble this myth that there isn't enough support for moms lies in us realizing, being open to realizing, recognizing, really getting honest with ourselves about how we're showing up that disallows the goodness to flow in. Lies in us having the grace and the compassion and the care for ourselves when we have those moments of realizing that this is what I wanted, why is it not what I thought it was going to be, and just allowing it to be easy, allowing it to be okay, and allowing it to be perfect, trusting that it all will unfold as it should. And then practicing our discernment between receiving what I want and receiving that which is trying to be forced on me because somebody else thinks that I should want it. Learning how to create healthy boundaries. There is so much here for you, Mama. I promise you, the support is unlimited. The love is endless. Everything that you can desire, everything that you want to receive, Mama, you can have whatever you like. Thank you so much for joining me inside this episode today, for your willingness to be in this conversation, share in the vibe, the wisdom, and the connection with me. This vibe is now yours to take with you. So take one more deep breath with me, Mama, and breathe this in before you step forward with the rest of your day. Pause what you're doing. Be still. Close your eyes. One hand on your heart one hand on your belly. Deep breath in and deep breath out. Feel what you feel. Honor it and love on yourself like crazy for being open to this moment right here, right now. If this episode resonated with you, made you feel something undeniable, I encourage you to share it and spread the love and please tag me so that I can connect with you and indulge in the vibe with you and so that together we can get this podcast into the hands of more mamas who could use a little naked mama in their life. Remember to subscribe so you can stay connected and if you're looking for love and support between episodes, follow me on Instagram at the real angel Rockwell. If you're feeling pulled for more, Join the Naked Mama private Facebook community where deep levels of magic await. Lastly, always feel free to connect with me directly. I adore voice messages, just FYI, 
If you choose to pop into my inbox, I guarantee I'll be all up in your inbox in the best way. I will see you here again next week for another transformative episode. Until then, sending love and light to you, beautiful mama.